everybody and welcome back to Halloween Town How To's. It is really cold in my house. Well, when I mean really cold, it was like 63 degrees in here. So I have the heat kicked on. Um, my body is in shock right now. I mean, you go from hot temperatures to this. This is November temperatures for us. Um, so hence the sweater. The heat blasting <laughs> but besides that I will be tackling Teddy today um, I'm using the mask because I want this to be a quick and easy DIY for anybody who is really hesitant about taking on something like this it's it's all right to gather different parts um, you know, I am crunched for time and I have no problem if I, you know, using Teddy's mask. Um, I am repurposing some things. I had made some foam presents for my outdoor Christmas time decorations that I'm not using this year. So I'm gonna repurpose this to create Teddy's body. I do want him a little disproportionate so his head is bigger than the rest of his body. Um, and yes, I know his body is round, not square. Just, just trust me, trust the process, and let's see if this works. So I'm just jumping into it, guys. Um, I do want the mask to be pressed into the foam so that way the head's not bobbing around. This is going to be one whole piece. And with Teddy, now, if you were going to have him set up where you were going to see the back of him I would probably try to find either a really big um, Christmas decoration ball and use that for his head and just put the the mask on and paint it black or help you know and then do the white lines um, but he is going to be hanging from my ceiling looking like he's flying down at you. So I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's, it's fine. At least I think. We'll see. So like I said, I am I want his body to be about that big. He is a teddy bear, as you know. So I'm just gonna press this down into the foam, not to break it, but just to create the crease where the mask will be set in. I'm sure I have to take some of that and try to use this flathead screwdriver to just carve out. And I'm just breaking these corners off not gonna see it. It's okay. Alright, this mask is gonna fit fine. And I will hit this with some glue. And then I also will hit this with some glue. I'm gonna let that dry. And in the meantime, I do want to round this section. So I have this black fabric that is felt. Um, it is left over. Oh, this would be nice for his cape. I'm going to use, I'm just going to cut that right off. 
cake done. All right. Using his head, because it's a circle, I'm going to place my fabric over top of it. to create a pattern. It'll make it easier. Now I know the head is bigger than the body. It's all right, just do it. So now, with this pattern, I need to create kind of that swoop, swoopy doop, just freehand in it because we can tuck. I'm going to add some more glue right here along the neckline and press this in. Do not burn yourself, people. And I think I'm going to take some don't be afraid to adjust it if you need to. It's all right. So now what I'm going to do is, and I probably will take this piece off right here. Just go like that. And I'm going to start gluing the ends to the bottom of the styrofoam. And I'm not worried about this because his hand's gonna, his arm's gonna go here. Do not pull the fabric all the way to the back. You're just covering the edges for now. All right, I did the sides. Now, I'm gonna take some batting. and stuff from underneath. All right, I'm gonna start gluing this down. And I'm gonna alternate sides. And now I'm going to do the bottom here. And before you close it up, make sure you have it filled enough to where you are happy with a nice plump belly. All right, so he's got a nice little chubby belly. Next are his Little arms and feet, I'm going to use my black pool noodle. So I'm cutting two the same size for his arms. And I just cut a little notch out of it so I can like I could do it this way but I want him doing this while he's flying over you Alright, 
So one teddy arm down. Right now I'm gonna cut some fabric out to cover his arms. I like the way this looks jagged. So I'm gonna start up here. Alright, I'm gonna do the other one and I'll see you back. Alright, so I've got both of his arms done. I will repeat the same process for his little legs. I am going to make them a little more stubby looking. A much easier way to do the legs as I'm kind of working through this and probably the arms too is to cut your pieces and place your pool noodle in your fabric then run a bead of glue along your pool noodle to start it. Press it down. And then just kind of add glue and roll it as you go. You can just trim off that excess and the part you want up against the body you have all this extra just put some glue on the inside where your pool noodle is and fold it in okay I'm gonna let that dry this one is dried and kind of want his legs to do do this kind of thing so I'm gonna glue his one leg here and I'm just gonna hold it there all right so I got arms and legs for my teddy Next, I need to do the little teddy bear lumpy arms. So, they might not look perfect, but that's okay. So let's see. This might be too big, it is too big. I'm gonna trim pulled noodle off the bottom a little bit more and now I have my teddy feet and I'm gonna do that four other times all right to make his hands you need to take your pool noodle cut it in half and then you have these inside curvatures. You're going to cut it not straight up and down, but start from the furthest part and angle it away from yourself towards the front. So, see how my scissors are angled a little bit? Just like that. So you end up with a little bit of a gradient and you do that for both sides and then when you put your pool noodles together now it should look sort of like a volcano and then you can hold it together and just round the sides of the top and you even can cut some of that front away to make it look a little curved. Okay. 
And now I'm gonna glue it and I have a little mitten. I'm gonna take a little piece and just create a little thumb. I'm gonna round that off. His thumb is dry. If you wanted to make this cleaner looking, you could cover this with some white fabric. Um, I'm not worrying about it because he's gonna be up on the ceiling and not close to where you're really going to be observing him. I'm hitting him with some hot glue and sticking him on being mindful of my black fabric. Take one of the candles I made and have him holding it. my basic shape for Teddy. Now I will go over and cover the back just, you know, just for aesthetic sake. sake. Okay, so I painted the lines on Teddy and I just kind of outlined where the buttons were going to go. And now I'm going to paint them in as well. You can use regular buttons. I, you know what? I think I might look to see if I have some regular buttons first. If not, I'm going to paint them in. All right, I painted in the buttons to Teddy. I painted a white circle first. After that was dry, I just went in with black paint and made the buttonholes. I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. And in the meantime, hold on. While I let Teddy dry for a little while, um, another project that I'm going to be incorporating with Teddy hanging from the ceiling so I'm going to have some floating candles, Teddy, and I sent some images to Staples because I want to create large tarot cards that are going to be hanging down from the ceiling also. So that's what I'm going to go run and do. And I'll just kind of incorporate that into this video too, so you can see how to do it. I am back and I am starting to glue up those tarot cards I wanted to make. And I'm just using Elmer's glue. I bought these poster boards that 15 came into a pack and for the back sides of them, I did print out the Haunted Mansion print. All right, and now I'm just gonna line up the bottom corners. Turning at the bottom and swiping across, making sure this is not straight. So I gotta pull it. This is like doing wallpaper. We all know how we love wallpaper. glued down 
all of the back side of the pieces of the cards first. And then after they're done drying, I'm just gonna flip it over and do the same process as this side. All right, so let's put a cape on this little guy. I'm just gonna rest him on my paint bucket. And I had this wire because I used it in a glove for Santa's hand to help support it. And I wanna do this so the cape looks like it is flapping. But I think in order to do that, I need some sort of support in here. I'm gonna cut this in half, and now I'm gonna glue this wire down into the cape. Okay, so I have glued in the wire, actually it's on this side, and I wanna make sure that when I glue, I gotta turn him a little bit. When I glue it on him, I want the edges or the side that I glued the wire to it and covered it with some fabric. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. However, I do want it facing upwards. And once it's on him, I can butt around with how I manipulate it. So I'm gonna start with the one side. I guess I might as well just glue this side on too. Okay, anyway, I'm using these floral staples to just support the bottom of the wire on this side. And I'm punching it through the material and then punching it through the glue. So I punched through here underneath where the wire is to give it some support and I'll hit it with some glue just to keep it in place. Once you get him up to look like he's got a cape on. Now I have an eye hook, which I have to figure out his center of gravity. And right now I think it's like right back here. So if I balance it, oh, I think I want it right back here. So this is a really extremely big eye hook. I couldn't find any smaller ones. Um, I just screwed a hole into where I want it. And now I'm gonna hit some glue there and screw this back in. 
I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna work on the other project. Okay, so I have my cards and I am just gonna trim up the sides and I'm just gonna do one. And I have my hole puncher. So now I can tie my fishing line. All right guys, so I wanted to pay homage to Disney World's Haunted Mansion. And I thought what great way to combine the floating candles with the floating tarot cards. So space throughout, I have candles and I have all different tarot card pictures. And here is Teddy all completed. He, he really came out really awesome. He stole a candle and he thinks it's funny. So he took me a day and um, you know, I definitely would do it again. I also want to share with you my apothecary cabinet that I made up. I decorated the top with, of course, the skeleton skull. And because it's the apothecary cabinet, I used dollar store glittery bones and made crossbones out of them. And then just highlighted it with some large pumpkin ornaments and rounded it all out with some orange lights. All right, everybody. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and you give this a try. I do also want to remind you that please send your pictures of your decorations, things that you made, or whether you bought props and made this awesome display out of it. If you carve a pumpkin, just send me a picture to Halloween Town How. I would love to put together a video of all my subscribers' um, decorations into one big video so everybody can share what they did this year. Please have the pictures to my Facebook page by, let's say, October 24th, because that weekend I would like to get it out. Um, I'm making a video even if three people send me stuff. I'm, I don't care. I'm doing it. But I really hope you guys do decide to um, send some pictures of your stuff. Um, once again, it is my Facebook page, Just Pictures, that's all I need, at Halloween Town How. So with that, get making, get creative, and I will see you next time on Halloween Town How Tos. Bye-bye, everybody.